Hello boys and girls, I'm super excited to share a book with you today that I found and I know you will be too as soon as I read you the title. It's called In Like a Lion, Out Like a Lamb. Remember the poem we read about that? Yeah, remember you guys made those really cute lambs and the lions and we talked about comparing and contrasting lion and lamb weather? All right, well today we're going to read Enjoy the Story and we're going to to be doing some comparing, but we're not going to be comparing the weather so much today as we're going to be comparing words. We're going to be listening for rhyme and then trying to find out why certain words rhyme with each other and noticing what's alike with them. All right, here we go. Let's enjoy this story by Marion Dane Bauer. In like a lion, out like a lamb. I love that picture. Do you see the lion laying down with the lamb? What a peaceful, peaceful image there. A peaceful picture. I see a little boy inside of his house, and it looks like the rain's coming down. It looks very cold outside. I kind of see a lion in the background, do you? You have to look closely to see that. Looks like the illustrator may have used some watercolors in these pictures. Here we go. March comes with a roar. He rattles your windows and scratches at your door. Oh, I would not like to go to my door and see a lion out there. That's for sure. He turns snow to mud, then tromps a Across your floor. Oh, I can hear moms and dads everywhere saying, wipe your feet. March comes with winter clinging to his tail. He scatters sleep and sometimes even hail. Well, let's talk about a couple of those words there. Boys and girls, do you remember when Mrs. Wilman taught you about the word sleet? I know you guys were learning about weather words with her, weren't you? Remember sleet was kind of a mixture of rain and snow and, yeah, just kind of a miserable kind of thing to drive in. Well, this is what that word means, but I want to find the rhyming pair. Are you ready? Listen as I reread. March comes with winter clinging to his tail. He scatters sleep and sometimes even hail. Did you find them? Yeah, you're looking at the end of these sentences, aren't you? Tail and hail. Boys and girls, I have some word cards that have those two words written on them because they are a rhyming pair. Look closely at these words here. Which one is on top? You're right, hail. You heard the ha, ha sound, didn't you? And the word on the bottom is Tail, tail. Look closely at those words. What's the same in both of them? Yeah, I heard a lot of you say they're ending, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Boys and girls, let's just take the beginning sound off of these for a minute. I'm going to cut the H off of hail and the T off of tail. And do you see what I have when I did that? Look at A-I-L. Both of these look exactly the same now, don't they? They do. The beginning sound changed. If I have the H in the front, it's hail, but watch. I can make that on top, or look at I can make it on bottom, the bottom too, can I? Hail. I'm just changing the ending, which one is the ending there, right? And they're both the same. So whether I have the top ending or the bottom ending, they're both the same. They both say hail. Watch this. If I put the T on top, I've got tail. If I put the T on the bottom, I have tail. That's because it was the same for both of those words. Now I could put those back, and I could have tail on the bottom, tail on the top, hail on the bottom, hail on the top because those word endings are the same. That's how we know they rhyme. They sound alike at the end of the word. Let's see what else we can find in a story like that. 
Were you expecting spring, he snickers? Reach for your slickers. I wonder what a slicker is. Let's look at that picture. What could it be? Use those eagle eyes. Oh, he says, reach for your slickers and look over here. That looks like what I call a raincoat. Is that what you call that, a raincoat? Maybe you've heard someone call this slicker before. Maybe because the raindrops would just kind of slip right off of them, kind of slick, kind of slippery. Hmm. Let's look at the word words snickers and slickers. I know, you already noticed that they rhymed, didn't you? All right, let's take a look at those words. Let's see if we're going to find something like we did before. Here we've got slickers, and down here we have snickers. Look at those blends. We just started talking about blends, didn't we? We sure did. I didn't have to go sl. I saw that chunk and I went sl. I didn't have to go sn. I saw that chunk and I went sn. Hey, I know. Let's try to get rid of the beginning sounds again. And let's see if we can do the same magic trick. Do those letters at the end of the words look the same? So I cut off the SL and I cut off the SN blend and let's look. Uh-huh, do I have a matching pair? I sure do, I've got ickers. Hey, I wanna put a st in front. Then what would I get? You're right, I get stickers and I sure do like stickers. All right, let's just see if we slide it in again. Sn Ickers, snickers, slickers, 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 snickers, snickers, slickers. They rhyme with the same ending sound. Did you know that snickers are kind of like a happy laugh? Yeah, if someone snickers, it kind of, could be a sly laugh, could be a happy laugh, where it says, were you expecting spring, he snickers? Kind of a little bit of a sly laugh in that situation. March comes with a pounce and a growl. Just step outside and hear him howl. Oh, that is a very scary picture to me. Yeah, he's got a very large roar going on there. If you howl back, will he go away? Not very likely. This lion means to stay. And stay, and stay. I think the author said that three times because, let's see, she really wants to emphasize that it seems to last a long time when March has unpleasant weather. Then, one soft morning, wind gives way to breeze. Buds pop out on the trees. The air is full of chickadees and bumblebees. Do you know what chickadees are? Chickadees are a type of little bird. I remember seeing a picture of them one time. They're really kind of cute. Well, boys and girls, look at all these words. Breeze, trees, chickadees, and bumblebees. Let's see if we can do our magic trick with those words. Look what I've got here. I've got bumblebees. Chickadees, trees, and breeze. I'm going to cut off the beginning chunks of these words and see what I get. All right. Oh, I wish I could just cut this right in half here. I could have bumble and bees. That would be a compound word. But we're really not talking about compound words right now. We're talking about rhyming words. So I'm just going to cut off the ending sounds. All right, here we go. All right, so I've got, I took the tur off of ease and I got trees. If I take the chickad off of this word, I've got ease, chickadees, but that's gone now. If I take off the bumble b off of bumblebees, I have ease. But wait a minute, something's fishy here. When I cut the burr off of ease, look at this. 
E E Z E. Does that match the other ones? Hmm. There's one, and there's one more here. Which one does not belong? One of them looks different, doesn't it? Yep, you spotted it. These all say E E S, but look at here E E Z E. Hmm. Did it not match? What's going on here? When I say ease, 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 they sound alike, but they're spelled differently. Is that okay? Do they still rhyme? They do. You guys did not get tricked. You knew that even though they were spelled a little bit differently, sometimes the Z is pronounced more like an S sound. So those words still rhyme. Let me say those one more time. And we'll see if you agree. The words are back together here. Breeze, trees, chickadees, bumblebees. Yeah, they have the same sound at the end, even though they're spelled slightly differently. Yeah, words can be so tricky. All right, here comes some more. And the lion takes a whiff, a sniff, and lets out an enormous sneeze. Did you hear the ones on this page? Whiff and sniff. Let's see if these are a little bit easier than the other ones. Here we go. Whiff, sniff. I didn't even need to cut it off and you saw the difference, didn't you? Let's do it anyways. I'm gonna separate the beginning sound from the ending sound for whiff. And I'm gonna do the same for sniff. So now I've got one chunk here you put your hand up in front of your mouth to feel the H? If, whiff. My other word is sn, if, sniff. And look at, there's that matching ending sound. All right, we did find another rhyme here. Let's read on and see how the story ends because I sure hope it doesn't end with a lion's roar. You do see a bluebird trying to come out of the window there. Or down by the window. All right. And guess who comes riding in, gliding in, striding in on that ah, ah, choo. Look at there. It's our lamb. Hooray. Boy, it sure has a gentle look, doesn't it? Remember when we described the lamb at school? We said it was gentle, soft, woolly. We talked about all those words. So, where will the march lion go? Will he wander to and fro? Defeated and lost, predicting frost? Oh boy. Or will he skulk through the greening grass? Eyes scheming, teeth gleaming, waiting for the lamb to pass? Hmm. No, never. This fellow is much too clever. He finds himself a sunny spot. He stretches, yawns, and curls into a knot. And that rumbling noise you hear? Never fear. The lion is done with roaring, and now he's snoring at least until next year. Come all you babies, just hear March sing. Ba, she says, ba, and ba again. Oh, I like that picture. What a nice picture to end on. There they are, springtime babies, flowers blooming. I see some iris there. Those usually come out in May. Those would be nice to see, wouldn't they? Well, boys and girls, that's the kind of weather I'm hoping for soon, and I sure hope we see some.